Recording in progress. All right. The first thing is the attendance. Uh, uh, who's here? Bob Collette. Uh, I saw Bob Collette and I saw uh, Dusty. Uh, who else is, uh, is gone on uh, Zoom with us? I'm on the uh, phone. Bill, Bill, Don's trying to ask if you can hear him. He must not hear him. Yeah, as soon as we can get... You all can hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. I want to talk into it so I can see if I can hear you. Don, can you hear this? All right. Bill, can you hear us? Are you muted? He might be. Well, this is kind of he might yeah, be but muted. we wouldn't hear him talk. That's true. We? we wouldn't hear him talk. Yeah. He might have us muted. So I don't know. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. We are unmuted. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. Okay. All right. So uh, I've submitted... Uh, what, um, see, the attendance, did, did we hear from Dawn? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, so we have, we have the four of, there's four of us, we have a quorum. I've been told by Barbara that she's not coming, so uh, it's only the four of us. So uh, we've, we've had the attendance. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is an up and down vote on the, uh, whether or not the Board of Health supports either the, um, uh, watershed or the uh, title or the title five. Uh, do I have a motion that uh, support that can be submitted that would support either one of them? Oh, I see right here. Yeah, and that's number two. Yeah. Could, could I just request to, uh, you that motion, Bob? Okay. Could I just have a quick okay. overview for? I would like to have, I would just uh, like a quick overview of the watershed. Let me see if I can figure out what's, what's going on here. Yeah, who can hear it anyway. Yeah. Sorry. Right. I do not understand why, I, why you guys are, are not able to hear me. Okay, um, okay, let's try this now. Start talking and see if the captions come up. Oh, can you hear us, Bill? Bill? You like, well, listen, I can see you, but I can't hear you. No, no, wait, wait, talking. And we're trying to see if you can hear us. Um, usually there's a, there's a prompt on here, the chat. Okay. I do see that you enabled the captions. I'm not seeing them popping up, though. Does that help? For some reason, none of you are coming across here. The captions are now appearing on my screen. I've got my I've got my volume turned up turned up a hundred percent. Are you able to hear me oh, yeah, on I'm Zoom? I'm to hear you. I'm on Zoom. This is Terry speaking. Can you hear me oh, properly? Um, okay. Is there Are there microphones? I mean, we, I can hear Bill and Dusty just fine. Are the, Bill and Dusty, would you like to say something and see if that helped? Yeah. Bill, Bill can you hear us? 
Anything? Terry, you hear us. Don, do you hear us? I do. Okay. I can hear you just fine. Okay. Uh, I, I, for some reason or other, do you have your, your, uh, your mute? Are you muted? No. Are, you, are, are, are any of the members muted because you're not coming through? No. Can you check your mute button? Or, Bill, what you could also do is if you would like to log off and log back in. Uh, yeah, the answer is, you know, my speaker's turned on. I've been, I've been listening to it. I, I just left another meeting, so I, 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 my speaker is, is, is on. Okay, and you can see me, right? Yes. What I don't understand, okay, hold on a minute. Let me try something else here, hold on. doing is I'm, I'm trying to get the, the uh, get the meeting on my phone so I can at least talk to you or I at least hear you. Okay. Give me a moment for the thing to wind up here. And I am seeing captions so as you uh, so as, as you talk I can I, the captions are coming up. Okay, can you hear me now? I mean, can I talk and see if I can hear you on this? Bill. Yeah, Bill. Okay, give me a, Bob, can you, can you say something? Hi, right, Bill. Hello, Bill. Okay. 
Bill, can you hear us? Yeah, I, th I can hear you now. Go ahead. All right. You're good. Okay, hear me, Bill? Yeah. Now we can't hear him. <laughs> Bill, can Bill, we lost you. Okay, I'm still here. Okay. All right. Okay, so <clears throat> I, I, I was unable to attend either of the two meetings that were uh, during which this, these topics were discussed. I was wondering if we could have Terry just give us a brief synopsis. I, I, I favor this in general, um, but I just wanted you know just a nutshell version of what we, what we'll be voting on. Please. In your packet, you'll see it. Uh, uh, Something that was published by the select board. Yeah. Okay, and the thing that was published by the select board, it has a, uh, a list of uh, uh, alternatives between the wastewater, I mean, excuse me, the uh, watershed proposal and the, uh, the, title, uh, the, uh, the title five proposal. There are six different items on it. Okay. okay. And I believe that uh, uh, the, um, that, that's a, what I call a decent summary that uh, covers the main points of uh, difference between the two of them. My impression is that if we were to follow the uh, Title V, we would have to we would have to recommend an addition of staff and an increase in the amount of uh, the, uh, in the in the amount of personnel in order to carry it out. I made an estimate that if we did one uh, the uh, one inspection a uh, a day during the work during a work year, we would have to we would have we would do 666. There are eight there there are 8,500 uh, resident residences in the town, which would mean that it would take about several years in order to uh, complete what I would what I read into the requirements for verifying the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the compliance of the, of the present system, uh, even with accepting uh, the uh, part that uh, was, part, it was, it was part of the, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the watershed proposal. So therefore, I, I believe that for the benefit, of, I'm just talking about my own opinion, I believe for the benefit of the town that the watershed proposal is the one that uh, it makes the most sense and doesn't and doesn't impact the uh, activities of our committee as much. Okay. All right. If I, yeah, if I as far as the thing I was talking about in the uh, yeah, I have, in the, I, in the, in yeah. the select board. Yes. Okay. If I may, Bill, I am happy to give Bob a summary as well. Go ahead. If I may. Yep. So. Within that comprehensive wastewater management plan alternatives analysis that was submitted as a reference for you folks, it shows all of the watersheds within the town of Bourne. Mm -hmm. Two of the watersheds were automatically designated as, as nitrogen resource area, nitrogen sensitive areas as of July 2023 with the implementation of the new Title V amendments and the promulgation of the watershed permitting regulations. Okay. So whether or not to file for a watershed permit is ultimately a separate decision and discussion from the CWMP, but these are nice resources to see what was proposed as alternative analysis for McGantz and Squatee being one of the watersheds with also the figures that shows, you know, what is impacted from it. And the other automatically designated nitrogen sensitive area watershed is the Finney's Harbor Eel Pond and Back River system that's shown there. Right. 
So what this essentially encompasses is meeting the total maximum daily limit of removal based on the level of impairment for it. So essentially a watershed permit would encompass meeting those reduction targets and that's that. Should the town of Bourne choose not to file a notice of intent or a watershed permit application, then Title V requirements for all properties within those watersheds would be triggered to need to upgrade to best available nitrogen reducing technology within five years from July 2025. So should there not be a watershed permit or any sort of filing um, for those two automatically designated watersheds, as of July 2025, there would be five years for all of the systems to be upgraded to the best available nitrogen reducing technology within a five year period. So um, watershed permits are different terms and longer terms, which the town would have reporting requirements and um, have to figure out exactly what that watershed permit would encompass to meet the removal targets. So I hope that helps clarify. Um, that last, last discussion, we talked about the extension that was granted over the winter by MassDEP. There is a shorter time period for new construction systems within these automatically designated watersheds to install the best available nitrogen reducing technology. And that deadline is now July 8th of 2024 for new construction on all the 31 watersheds on Cape that were automatically designated. So <clears throat> there is a time period for new construction specifically, but for all systems in general, the deadline for a notice of intent or a watershed permit application or what's called a de minimis load filing is July of 2025. Okay. Um, if I can, Mr. Chair. Bill, do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. All right. So the way I'm understanding it, we're better off with the water approving the watershed other than the Title V because we end up with more control over the situation. If we go with the Title V, and the way I understand it from, well, it's got to be four or five months ago we had a meeting, and they could institute the 500 foot or the 1,000 that they want the septics redone and to meet the current standards, which would be astronomical to many, many homeowners that it put a very big bind on them. Let me put it that way. And uh, some of them don't need to be replaced but they're being forced to replace it. Now, Terry, correct me if I'm wrong in any of that thinking. Essentially, the highlighted areas on the maps provided, which I can even share my screen if that is all right to do so, it would impact all the parcels within the highlighted area. So it would be greater than 150 feet that the Board of Health now currently requires, regardless of watershed distinction, it would encompass all of those parcels within the watershed. So here's Finney's Harbor. River system. So it's all of the parcels within that green area versus current regulations are subject to that one set of foot 
you know, certain wetland resource areas should be, you know, along the coast primarily. And for Gansett Squatid, oops, apologies. It'd be our, all the parcels within this watershed as well if the Title V were to go into effect. With the watershed permit application, the town would have more control over what the town is proposing to Mass DEP to target to meet the nitrogen removal goals. So. Quite honestly, my, my opinion is that because of that, it has more value to the town to follow that process. You know, have the town have uh, exercise what I would call more local control over what's going on. Hmm. If we followed a watershed, uh, let's see, uh, this process. I think that's the point that Dusty was making, uh, his question, right? Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> and I would agree with that. I'd be in concurrence with that. Okay, so with that, do you, is there enough information, or do you have enough information uh, to um, make it, uh, to express an opinion as to which, which process the Board of Health would recommend to the select board? You want to make it, or you want me to make it? I make a motion to approve the Watershed Act, Watershed Permitting Act, instead of the Title V regulations. Is, is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Is, there any, is there any further discussion on this? Hearing none, I'll ask for, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor of the... Uh, of the uh, 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 the propo uh, that proposal uh, roll call. indicate by saying aye by roll call. Dusty? Yes. Bobby? Yes. And is Dawn on, on board online? Yes. And, and what, is, what does he say? He voted yes. Yes. Okay. And I vote yes. You want to submit this to... Uh, Okay, I, I understand that uh, uh, the, uh, that uh, Mary Jane is in the audience. Okay, so uh, Terry, I am, but it should, be, the, uh, uh, it should be submitted in writing from the board of health to the select board. I'm just listening. So who, who is that? It, this is MJ Abel. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I, I, I think that the vote of the select of the board of health should be submitted in writing to the select board. Um, not, I'm just listening to hear what kind of discussion you've had. Okay, uh, Jerry, would you submit a, uh, 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 submit a staff uh, memo that, uh, I, the announcing the vote of the select board and send that over to them? Certainly. I will Thank CC you. you all. Okay, what's the next next item on the agenda? Uh, is that the uh, Bible well? I don't have the I don't have a copy of the agenda in front of me, so help me out here. Yes indeed. The private drinking water well regulation. Okay. Mm -hmm. To review the model. That um, I really think is way overdue. I, we, we spend so much time identifying the regulations of safety as we go in, as as we uh, allow people to use a private well, but we don't seem to have that piece. And I think that that's what uh, I don't know what the Dusty was bringing up. So uh, anyway, let's start off the discussion. Dusty, do you have a do you have an opinion that you want to share with us? Yes, I happened to be in a situation two years ago for the state, and. We had an issue where private well, it was a state well at a state facility that the ground, the well water was contaminated at this 
They found it through drinking water. If they had been inspected every year or, you know, run their own tests, which they do now, the state does, it would have been found a lot earlier and they could trace back to where it came from and do it that way. What I'm concerned with, the water traveling under the ground that you, you put a well in also must pass through a septic system. And upon looking, investigating the state's issue, we dug a test hole and we could see how far down the pollution was from the surface that it affected ground, you know, the groundwater. If it had been tested, it would have been found sooner corrected. They did find the issue where it was coming from and corrected that situation, but the well still today is not usable. So with the poems, we know at the base how they traveled. I'm afraid that, you know, if uh, Wings Neck, Scraggy Neck, all the wells out in that area, people who have wells, they could be polluted and not even know it. So that's why I'm thinking of, I'd like to see a ruling that they have to be inspected at least yearly and how, you know, who does the testing in that will have to be determined by us, I think as far as does the Board of Health do it or does a private concern do it, submit the paperwork to the Board of Health to verify that the water is clean or not clean. And that's my issues with it. And that's why I think we need to have a, a legitimate hearing process on this because uh, the first, I know that when, uh, you know, when I had the experience on the Cape Cod Commission, we, we had, we had uh, dug many test wells, and we found a lot of the, uh, uh, how the plume, the plume do, you know, do pass. I think within our, within all of our members, we remember the debacle over John's Pond, you know, which was, you know, which was the, required the, uh, uh, the town to, uh, to distribute potable water to people, for, you know, for several months, which, you know, which was quite expensive. But, but the point is, it, uh, it's an issue that needs to be addressed. I don't know uh, if uh, I'd agree with the uh, with the idea of one one year. I know that uh, you know the county does have uh, test facilities as far as testing water quality, and uh, and maybe we you know we, we would initiate that. But it does present a an enormous logistical burden. You know that uh, we have you know that's the thing we have to figure out as to as to how how to set up the logistics of this. Uh, that would make it feasible so that we actually could, you know, we could actually do that. Um, um, so, anyway, um, I think that it, this is on the, on the agenda to, let's say, what I would call to establish a process where we would have a hearing and have public input with regard to, um, you know, as to what is reasonable. And at that point, I, would, yeah, I think we would invite uh, some uh, a water quality specialist in that you know in here to let's say to advise us as to what the periodicity of testing you know uh, would be reasonable on this. Bobby, well, I mean, do you have something to say on this? Well, there is a lot to consider. I agree, and <clears throat> we also one of the greatest considerations is whether we have the staff resources to accomplish that. You know, to uh, so depending on how how many wells there are, we don't know many. There's a lot of information gathering to be done up front before we even get you know would consider moving forward with with the idea but I do support the idea in general it just has to, we, we need to have a lot more information I agree maybe a water quality specialist um, double check with the county lab to see if it is something they could help us with all of those things and all right, Terry's got her hand up uh, Bill this meeting is being recorded. Bill Terry would like to speak is that John? No, Terry would like to speak. Oh, okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you. So with the model Board of Health regulations that were submitted to the Board of Health, 
These were developed by Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. And they originally developed them in 1989 for boards of health to, to use and have been updated since, most recently updated February 27th of 2023. The cover sheet for those regulations, there is a detailed document called Private Well Guidelines that MassDEP's technical staff has prepared for the Commonwealth and specifically for boards of health as well to get more specific construction guidance and assistance on how wells are made as well as drinking water contaminants of concern in specific regions of the Commonwealth. These regulations are a lot more comprehensive than what the Board of Health has presently. And there are sections of which I would like to specifically get some input from the board this evening on, if possible, if the board would entertain such discussion. Sure. Well, Is it? I, I, let, me, let me add to that, that when I read, you know, when I read through the uh, regulations that you were kind enough to submit to us, uh, they all, you know, they all seem to make sense. And the, and the idea would be that uh, um, that supports what I would call the health and safety of the community if we were to have some way of verifying the, uh, uh, what, what I would call the uh, potability of the water that's in there. Uh, I began to get concerned about this when we approved a, uh, I think it was a, a, a well construction that had a certain amount of salinity you know, that was in it because I have a, a great fear that uh, a salt intrusion is something that can accumulate uh, you know, over, you know, over time. And that it, if in the beginning it had a certain level, let's say, of, uh, of, of, of uh, salt or anything that developed particulate matter, it does change what I would call the corrosive nature of the water that's being introduced into the uh, delivery system you know, with, you know, within that particular residence. Okay, that's only part of it. But, but what, what I, I mean, it's just my opinion. What, what I'd like to see is some, you know, let's say, <clears throat> some, uh, what I would call, not diagnosis, but some, you know, some, some evidence given on a regular basis, <clears throat> excuse me, that says this water is safe to drink. And, and I have a vision of, let's say, the submission of a, of a water sample <clears throat> that would uh, be then sent to a, uh, uh, to some, to a, let's say, to a testing facility. Those things do, do exist at the county and at the state. And then uh, at, at the, um, you know, at, at, the, at the end of a, a period of time, we, you know, we would have a, uh, let's see, some, some experience with it. So it, the uh, logistical burden you know, might, be, might be reduced to a certain degree. And now, is, does that sound like it's moving in the kind of direction that you want, Jerry? Yes. So I can explain that that is presently done. Any water sample has to be sent to an EPA approved water quality laboratory. There is in fact one located at the Barstow County facility and there are a few others within the region. They're held to certain standards and they report to the local boards of health their findings as well. For new wells, newly constructed wells, we receive those water quality sampling reports within that the lab itself will indicate that it meets the primary and secondary drinking water standards for potable water for human consumption. If there are additional standards which a local board of health wishes to adopt, then that's something that can be reviewed internally as well. Provided that the water is passing, a water supply certificate is issued to that new well, which does say this is safe for human consumption and in that it meets the primary and secondary water quality standards. There's a list of those standards within the regulations. Mm -hmm. And that is on page 11 of the regulations. Now, all of these have to be compliant with it to be at the initiation of the uh, of acceptance of their permits. Is that correct? For 
the permit is to construct and drill the well. The well can be permitted, but not be passing for human consumption should it not meet the water quality parameters in the regulations. Yeah, that's, all or, that's all understood or, for the initiation and for new construction of wells. But what we're talking about is what is reasonable in terms of, let's say, in terms of uh, what I call verification over time. So within these model recommendations, on the following page 12, MassDEP has outlined a series of times in which these wells should be sampled other than at the time they're constructed and approved. Okay, and, but we have no regulation on that. And that's what I think what Dusty is concerned with. Okay, and, I, and I think that that's what, that's what we are, are interested, as I understand it, that's what we're interested in, uh, let's say, in developing is a standard for, um, uh, for compliance after, you know, let's say, uh, after the initial acceptance. Precisely, no. and this is what is outlined in page 12 of these model regulations, which some were highlighted and in red for you folks to get some feedback from the Board of Health as to what you feel is, is reasonable based on what the state recommendations are for this. Well, I, I think that what they propose is, you know, is, is necessary, and, but what we have to decide on is what is sufficient. Is there any other members of the board want to weigh in at this point? Yeah, Bill, can you hear me, Bill? Yeah, the only thing I see on here on page uh, 12, it says wells installed in bedrock aquifers should be tested at a minimum of every 10 years. Well, in 10 years, a lot can happen. I'm thinking more just for testing of the water quality, if it's every two, three years, would be better than 10 years. And well, once you discover... Any amount of retesting it would be better than what we're doing now. Go ahead. Dusty, if I may, Go ahead. point out that the paragraph in which you were reading, yeah. a few sentences prior, indicates the third line down for item number six on page 12. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. The following chemical and bacteriological parameters at a minimum of once per year. Okay. Total coliform bacteria, E. coli bacteria, nitrate, nitrite, pH, conductivity, sodium, and iron. <clears throat> and then all of the other chemical parameters in that long list on the previous page right. should be tested at a minimum of every 10 years. And then for the bedrock, that's specifying radiologic parameters, which most likely are not necessary for the type of wells that we have mm -hmm. here in Marshall County. But there is a minimum of once per year and then a more broad chemical parameter testing at a minimum of every 10 years within that as well. And that would be for, for all. So the once a year that I suggested early on, they're, suggest, they're saying the same thing. A well should be tested once a year. Now the reason why this upsets me that now we're fooling with this is we test the new systems, septic systems, every what, one, two years maximum? And water is a hell of a lot more important than the septic. And I'd like to see the state's recommendation of a one-year thing be put in effect. But if I may, it, this is the draft model regulation from the DEP. 
Right. So, so this is what, what they suggest we should do. That's yeah. correct, but yeah. we do we do that? No, but we have the opportunity to do that. That's right. what I want to see done. <clears throat> so at this point, if we uh, if we just took the took the opinion of uh, let's say adopt let's say adopting those um, and and, say, and uh, were of the uh, uh, making the assumption that these were comprehensive enough to, let's say to meet what I would call our concern as a board of health. Uh, it, well, oh, I think it's a little bit premature. Let's say to vote on. I think that we do need. Uh, you know, so at least to hear from the public to find out what their concerns are, you know, with regard to this. They, they may not even, you know, people with private wells, and we're talking about an expensive, an expensive proposition because the, uh, whatever, whatever licensing is involved, the cost of that license and, and the, uh, to perform the test is going to fall upon the, uh, you know, the citizens. Okay, so, uh, there needs to be a communication to the citizens, in my opinion, as to why we're doing this. Okay. And, and there's some other approaches that we could use. Uh, what, what we might do, you know, given the fact that, we, uh, that we're on a, uh, I think we're on the Sagamore lens, okay, that there might be ways of determining, let's say, a, a test that would basically give us a picture of what's going on in the region. I know that that's what they, they finally came up with when we were when we were dealing with the um, you know with the process that we're doing at the uh, the base where they're dirt, digging up the dirt sterilizing it, and then putting it back you know in, you know in the in the ground in order in order to clean it out um, and there is the there is the possibility that we you know, we would consider uh, identifying what I would call test well areas that would you know that would be in the uh, in, let's say in the uh, in the direction of what we know the underground water flow would be, uh, you know, that might, you know, that might go around what I would call bedrock parts that you're talking about that would not, that would not be permeable. So that, you know, that would be something else that, you know, that might be considered in the whole range of this, you know, of this, of this testing, you know, uh, activity. Um, what do you think about that? If I, if I may, Go ahead. as a four bill, the purpose of this evening was really to present these model regulations and what Nancy suggests for boards of health as a baseline to adopt, to go over changes based on what's existing. And those are within the water quality testing parameters specifically, and for the frequency of testing on page 12. I also have highlighted and hope to point out something similar to what you're discussing is that there are known groundwater plumes that have been identified and there are more stringent requirements in our existing local health regulations where we have an active landfill in this town. So we have presently a 400 foot, a 400 foot setback from any solid waste handling facility, active or not. And we have a restriction to install, we have a restriction to not install a new well for human consumption if its placement is hydraulically down gradient of the Bourne Integrated Solid Waste Facility. And that is specified within these regulations as well. There are changes to the setback distances from our existing regulations, which I was hoping to get some feedback from the board tonight as well. And with the discussion and information, we were hoping to clean this up for you folks to take another look at and have another reading and then set dates to hold public hearings. There is a public hearing requirement and to establish public comment periods that the board is comfortable with to receive that feedback and, um, and to go from there. That, that was the process really that I was looking for this evening and to go through kind of what was highlighted within the regulations for you folks to see if I could answer any, any questions to them or if, 
we could you know get a feel of what what opinions or additional information might be needed on certain subject items okay well it was my hope that uh, based upon the fact that the burden of, of delivering this service and based upon the fact that uh, we're concerned about the uh, lack of any the, uh, any testing after you know after the initial installation uh, that uh, the thing that you're talking about that you know that you've highlighted uh, lead themselves into what I would call the uh, the bones of a uh, of a, um, of, a re of a regulation or a model regulation that uh, that in your opinion as a health agent would, you know, would meet what I would call uh, our concern as a board of, of what represents uh, appropriate safe behavior that supports our interest in um, in defending uh, the uh, good he the, the health and safety of our of our community so uh, Dusty, uh, since since this is of great interest to you and, and you were kind enough let's say to put this on the agenda do you have anything to uh, let's say to tell terry as to what of, of the things that she's concerned with uh, what 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 do you want her to uh, get as guidance from based upon your concerns well, as Terry stated there, bringing it before the public, you have also mentioned that too, Bill, is that something we have to do. How we go about it, I imagine first, writing a letter to the Board of Selectmen to do this, arranging this, have all our ducks in order, and listen to the public, because they're the ones who are affected by this. And uh, I think we have to go. And I don't know what place you could hold a meeting with that many people. Because there are quite a few wells out there. Go ahead, Terry. Yes. Um, the public hearing process would be held with the local Board of Health. This would be a similar process to what was recently conducted with the tobacco regulations. Right. We would advertise the dates of the public hearings you know, meeting location and how to submit public comment if people are interested by a, by a certain date and time. And it would be a public hearing held as similar to a regular meeting as possible, but it would be specific to this topic and taking that, that feedback and hearing verbal and written testimony, testimony from the public. Prior to doing so, we should have a draft regulation yeah. put together that indicates what really the changes to it would be. And that's why I have highlighted some sort of decision trees for you, for you folks in there. If I could perhaps turn attention to page seven of the regulation on setback distances. There are three columns with the potential source of contamination, the existing regulations. As a practical matter, how many how many residences are within 400 feet downgrade of the uh, landfill? I'm unable to answer that question specifically. Well, what I'm at is that that regulation, you know, is a common sensical regulation. You wouldn't want to put, you know, you wouldn't you want to you wouldn't want to put. Uh, a well downgrade from a septic system and you certainly wouldn't want to put something downgrade from uh, you know, let's say from a uh, the integrated solid waste facility even though it does have a double you know a double apron that prevents what i would call leaching coming you know coming into the groundwater uh, we, we are on a lens we do not have a reservoir i understand that part of it and that's all part of why why there's great concern about the uh, about the wells because it is groundwater, and it is susceptible to uh, what I would call uh, uh, the development of plumes that would carry on pollutants to, uh, let's say, uh, 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 to, you know, to the well. And now, I agree. On the decision tree things that you have, because I don't, I don't have that in front of me right now. Can you put that up on the screen? Sure. Just give me one moment, please. And and it is a part of the landfills permit requirement to confirm with us when they are renewing their permits that 
the local board of health still does have that setback in place, which is why it was an item that was in bold. I do confirm that regularly with the ISWIM staff. And um, when that requirement was put in place, any wells that were found to be down gradient were abandoned and those properties would have been connected to town water. So to our knowledge and for members that were present during the site assignment process, we went over that again, that there should not be any potable drinking water wells within that distance. I'm not, I'm not seeing a page, but uh, again, that applies to what I would call uh, something had, that had been done. And when was that? That was done several years ago, right? No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But today, um, the uh, when you when you say a, de a decision tree process, the concern that we all are expressing as a board of health is that uh, if we're required, if you're saying that uh, that the board of health has to somehow write this model regulation, uh, I, I find that you know. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's up, it's up it's up there now. Okay, this is all talking about. Uh, yeah, these are all, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm familiar with this, with this, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, thing there, okay, but, and, and by the way, that, when, when I read this to begin with, it occurred to me that over time, there might be construction that would change the position of the septic tank, okay, there's, there's uh, the underground fuel storage tank, uh, and pesticide tanks are, are another thing that could be changed in terms of in terms of where they are, because that might, that might be done by a homeowner without consulting us. And then uh, uh, let's see. I don't believe we have uh, what, what I'd call enough. The, I think the figure eight is the only place where you would have what I'd call significant manure store, storage, uh, unless storage, unless you, uh, Terry, you could tell me at this point where that was. Any, any horse stable or agricultural, as listed in the definitions, would be appropriate um, to have that 100 foot setback. It also is within the stable, it, it coincides with our current animal regulations to have that 100 foot setback as well. Existing is 100 feet and the state recommends the same of 100 feet, which would not be a change on any man manure storage areas. That would be an important thing, having the sole source aquifer and typically uh, sh shallower wells. However, I noticed that our existing regulation has a 25 foot setback to a property line. The state proposes 10 foot. Oh. That's why the state. <clears throat> So that one is different than what we have presently. The that's, 250 that's different from what you have as, a rec as far as a recommendation from the state, and they're recommending, uh, in, in, let's say, in four instances, changing that. Yes. Okay, yes, that's now, what the, so the you're, you're law opinion, regulation has here. Are you willing to give an opinion as to whether or not these increases are uh, something that we should accept? The property line setback distance to be just 10 feet would be a decrease from the existing 25 foot setback. I do think that's I see that, but what's your opinion? Are you, are you going to give us an opinion? If, if I may, it is consistent with Title V, having a 10 foot setback to a property line. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's within 10 feet from, a, from the roadway. So I think that 10 foot is conservative to just be from the property line itself. I believe in general, you know, the items in red here are worth a strong consideration to increase. This 100 foot, the language has changed a bit, but is consistent with a leaching catch basin to a leaching field or a cesspool. So if I may, uh, the <clears throat> so the 25 foot in, in that second column, those aren't 
those are those are exist in the current state regulation, Terry, or the, the statewide minimum standard, or so I noticed that I was looking at this chart earlier, and uh, the the ten foot uh, recommendation here in red is the only reduction or reduced distance that that is that you're proposing or recommending for us. So I'm just curious if those if it's a statewide minimum standard that middle column, the minimum lateral distance. So the, the existing is based on the local, the existing Born Board of Health regulation that's in place now. Okay. And the proposed recommendation is based on the updated model regulation by MassDEP. So this is a little bit similar to the tobacco where right. they don't have specific criteria, regulations in place for private drinking water wells yet, Bob, and it's something that's really overseen by local boards of health. Okay, so do you think how tobacco was, you know, five years ago. Right. So the, the 25 versus the 10 you think is excessive in this case? I think that the 10 feet is, is fine because having 25 feet from a property line is, is different from having 25 feet from a roadway, which would be a more significant setback distance as far as sand and salt and pollution from a roadway right. or runoff. Yeah. Okay. But if it's just the property line, which is really the easiest way and the best and only way to offer a setback. That's the same setback for a septic system to a property line. Right. And it doesn't necessarily mean, mean that it's going to be 10 feet from, from a roadway. It's just to yeah. the line of the property. So provi I think that's fine. Uh, yeah, it provides a little more flexibility. I, I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure, where you're going with that, though? Well, where I'm, where I'm going with this is that I would like to see a water quality, uh, let's say, sample be submitted on a regular basis, so that we have some sort of indication that you know people are not at risk. Right. In other words, something simple that everybody could do that uh, that would be affordable, but yet yet, yet would meet our requirement that you know that we're providing some oversight for the continual use of that particular private well, and also would give us an indication at some point that if we started to see what I would call an increase in the density of problems in private wells in an area, that that would be, uh, that would trigger a responsibility in the part of the town to, uh, uh, let's say, to extend the town water system. You know, that's, that's where I'm going with this. Yeah. What do you guys think of that? I think I think you're right. I mean, the regulation is going as as written calls. It already exists uh, that they have to be. They will be checked every year. The, the, the controlling the cost is obviously important, but we're we're not. We won't have a whole lot of control over that, for the you know for the folks that have wells. Um, and then, I, I think, you know, when you start talking about. Tying into the town water system and all that—that's that's another. It's a huge endeavor, and it's way beyond our scope here. Well, that's the point of us yeah. talking about it. Yeah. As to what you know, as to what is it within our scope of doing something about it, and yet, uh, as a practical matter, uh, do something that in, that we feel is within our responsibility of protecting the. Uh, the, you know, the people that have a private well. 
Mm -hmm. Dusty, you have any comment on that? Uh, just testing every year, and to me, that if you get a bad well or a signal saying there's something wrong here, you have to make tests more often. But you can have a, well, we did. Otis Rotary, tractor trailers, dumped over with a load of, uh, I believe it was jet fuel. And what did that do? They kept drilling and finding it move further and further. So it can happen in any way. So that's why I'm saying the one-year requirement, testing, and stay on top of it, which is a lot for Terry's department to handle. So if we privatize it, in other words, say they have to have their own people, qualified people, test the water, bring the results to Terry's office, to the Board of Health office, and report. I think, but like you say, general public meetings, this and that, because they may not care for this expense. But how do we find out what it will cost for testing? Go ahead. Well, I think that depends. I think that depends upon the kind of test that, you know that we're talking about. You know, I uh, water sample test. I think we. Um, I, I think it was like about uh, between twenty-five and thirty dollars. You know, raw cost. But we're not talking about the kind of volume because we're talking about how many private wells are in town. And I think there's, you know, there's several thousand private wells that are in town. Uh, you know, let's say 80, if there's 8,500 dwelling units, um, uh, and there's, let's say, uh, uh, 3,000 of them, just to, just to use a figure, that need to be tested every year, okay, at, uh, at uh, let's say, 30 bucks a pop, you know, to get, let's say, to do the administrative, uh, some of the administrative cost of, of processing and so forth, is we're talking about something close to about ninety thousand dollars that you know that has to be you know has to be collected from people. Now, we might say, uh, what would be when we have something tested? What would be a reasonable level of cost? And then we can you know we can you know we can certainly look into that and, and find out what a what a water sample test would cost if we submitted it to the county. Because I know that when, you know, when, I, when, when I was there, and I think since then, they, they, are, they are running water quality sample tests. But, Dusty, is that enough, enough to be included in the test procedure, okay? Or, or, or does there need to be some verification of these, uh, you know, these uh, distances from property lines and so forth that have to be verified as well? You know, that, that's a, in other words, how comprehensive should our regulation be? Should it be simple, you know, with one you know, with one particular element, or should it be more comprehensive with all these other elements being verified on some type of regular basis? Well, the footages that are stated in this report here by the state and what's existing in this town is is good. You've got to have a start. And until a red flag is thrown up that we have to increase the distance, we'd have to do that at a later time. But I agree with these figures that are here. And I do okay. too. And uh, Bill, I think Terry has something to say. Go ahead, Bill. I think Terry would like to speak. Oh, if, I, if I may explain the sampling process for you folks. I would estimate there probably is less than 3,000 private water supplies within the town of Boring. It encompasses the end, the point of Wings Neck, primarily. There are some smaller neighborhoods within Cassett that have private water supplies. Parts of Borndale on the border of Plymouth, which may have private water supplies. And there's few in Sagamore Beach that have private water supplies as well. The majority of parcels are connected to one of the different public water supply systems. So um, probably less than 3,000 as a starting point, just to kind of put that in, in perspective. But the process for sampling, it depends on whether it's a new well at, 
a sample would be conducted at the at the point of the well by the well driller, the licensed well driller, submitting that for approval of a new well. Versus if it's an existing well, that sample can be done by the homeowner from a certified water quality laboratory. You're given a chain of custody document and instructions as to how to test your water. And you, you do so and the homeowner themselves can bring them to the laboratory with their forms and pay for their test and have their test process and receive the results. The local boards of health are going into these homes and taking the water samples. So I just wanna make sure that that is something that the board of health really, really understands. And I did okay, um, yeah. reach out yeah, to the lab. That's a new well, for and that's certainly something that can be followed for, you know, for the, uh, re, uh, let's say for the retest over time. Isn't that, it, that certainly, that, that's certainly something that would be included in uh, any type of a retest. It would you have to be a chain of custody, as you say, to verify that the sample is actually coming from the right place? Wouldn't it? There's, there's always a chain of custody, yes. But for existing wells, it's the sample is taken at the point of consumption, which is perhaps a kitchen sink for a lot of homeowners. And that's something that the homeowners do themselves from a kit from the laboratory and deliver to the laboratory themselves with the forms. And I have checked in with the Barnstable County Laboratory to ask about some of the new water quality criteria that's in here. Um, it doesn't appear that it falls under what they call a residential water sample. And I was curious if they have the capacity to test for the PFAS parameters that are listed and recommended in here for the wells and to kind of estimate for the Board of Health just to have an understanding of what it would cost a homeowner from, from one of our local water quality well, that, laboratories. But. That's certainly the reason why I think we should have some water, let's say some uh, water quality uh, engineer specialist or whatever, okay, whatever the, uh, the, the technical people at the county or at the Commonwealth could come down and advise us about. I mean, that was, that was the point of bringing that up. Okay, so at, the, at this stage, to summarize what I've heard, and perhaps you know, the, the, the rest of you could, uh, could say something, is that, okay, we have, some, we have some direction as to what we need, okay? So we have some, uh, you know, some things that we, that we absolutely have to do, and then uh, we uh, then we have to go uh, once we do those two things, uh, then we can uh, have the public uh, public hearing process. So the first thing is to uh, let's say is to uh, say that whether whether or not we're in favor of the of the Commonwealth's regulation as far as a as far as, far as a benchmark on which to base uh, uh, let's say our retesting capability. I think we have to decide as a board as to what we should look at in terms of the minimum standard for retesting. In other words, what, what needs to be retested on a regular basis, so let's say to give us you know, some, some indication going forward. And then the, uh, the other, other thing is that we should have some, you know, let's say some people who uh, spend all of their time dealing with water quality and uh, water, let's say in private well uh, management uh, responsibility to come and give us some, uh, let's say, some direction on that, and then at that point, I think that we would, we might be be ready to go forward to bring the public into it to, you know, to get their, to get their, to get their, uh, their feedback. What, 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 what do you, what do people think? If I can, Bill. Go. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, please. I totally agree with that. We need education from, you know, experienced people and professionals in the industry before we go in front of the public. So we have the information when the public asks. Yeah, we lost you, Bill. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with the... Uh... Uh, with other than going to the county, they have somebody, they have them show up or have, have them recommend somebody that should tell us about this. Uh, uh, so, uh, 
this is something that, Terry, during your work day, could you contact the county uh, to see whether or not somebody would be available to come and talk to us about this? I most certainly can. And I, I did already reach out to the Barnesville County Water Quality Lab Director about these specific testing parameters and their capacity. As far as the technical information within these regulations, it could be someone from MassDEP who published all the detail private well guidelines for the technical guidance. Okay, so I think what we need to do is to, is to find a date when they can come and appear before us to talk about it, and you could perhaps set that up when, you, when you're in contact with them. Okay, so, all right, so you, you're tasked with doing that, and uh, we'll, we'll wait to hear from you from that part. As far as, as I say, does anybody on the board at this point uh, uh, have any opinion as to what, what uh, let's see, what amount of input in terms of looking at what uh, Terry has uh, uh, highlighted as far as any changes or uh, additions or subtractions from what, uh, from what this uh, state regulation has? Not as far, not as far as I'm concerned. No. Okay, so, so we're we're good. Bobby, are you good with that? Yeah, I think I mean, uh, the recommendations that uh, well, Terry, I think she would like some some feedback on the you know, highlighted areas. If I'm if I'm correct, right, Terry? Is that what you is that what you're hoping for tonight? I ultimately was hoping that the board would be comfortable to to do so that so you know we could have a streamlined draft for you folks. Well, I, or does it make? We're saying that we're all, we're all in favor of what you're recommending. Right. There, there's a, a like on uh, page 12. There's a you know a decision to be made should versus shall in uh, number six uh, three. Section six three on that, uh, what, about the fifth line down, and three should be versus shall be. So those are the kinds of things we should. I don't know if we need to decide on tonight, but those are little, uh, you know, semantics that we need to figure out. And uh, recommends versus requires that kind of thing. But I, you know, I, as far as the chart on page seven goes, I'm totally in support of that. I think that looks good. The, the changes that Terry is recommending, uh, but it might make sense to have someone come in, like mm -hmm. you said, from DEP, explain, you know, share all of the technical knowledge, and then we can make these changes and, and come up with a draft model, a draft regulation to, dis to discuss at a public hearing. That seems to be reasonable to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Me too. Okay, so we'll say, I don't think we need a vote at this point no. as much as I'm hearing that there's a consensus of, 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 of enough information for Terry to go forward to make the streamline that regulation. Do you agree, Terry? Yes. Yes, indeed. And Okay, um, so when you put that together and you've uh, got a date for, uh, for somebody coming in, Perhaps we could have what would, you, what would appear to be like a workshop at that point. What do you think? Okay. So, so I think we can uh, we can safely leave this issue for now, right? Correct. Any 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 other opinion about that? No. Until we get further. You know, mm -hmm. reports from the professionals. We, I have no questions. Well, the opinion that we can now leave this and go on to the next agenda item. What do you think? Yes. Yes. Okay. What's the next thing on the agenda? Public comment. Public comment. On non, non agenda <laughs> items. In the audience? Nobody in the audience, unless somebody's okay, on my Zoom. Yeah. 
Okay, so what's the next, uh, anybody in the Zoom I should ask, I should uh, have a seat. Comments from the we, board. We, we don't seem to have a lot of attention tonight. Uh, what's the next item on the agenda? Comments from the board in regard to future agenda items. Okay, well, it looks like we've got something cut out for us. Um, right. Um, Bobby, do you have any other, other thing that's on your mind about that? No. Dusty? No. Okay, and uh, uh, what about Dawn? No. Okay, thank you. All right, and, I, and at this point, okay. I, think, I think we've given up. Terry would like to say something, Bill. What's that? Terry would like to speak. Oh, go ahead. Pardon me. Is the Board of Health still interested in hearing from Mass DEP about Title V and watershed regulations in upcoming months, provided that you all had a vote this evening on that? Um. I, I I think we need to be we need to be informed of what they're doing, right? Yeah. So I think that part of your report might include that. You know, when you make when you make the report to the board, you can include some comment as to what you've heard from uh, you know, from the state with regard to the watershed or whatever. Let's say whatever is being imposed on us, because the select board now has to make it their own decision with regard to. They just asked us for an opinion, and we gave. It. At the December 13th Title V workshop at the Board of Health, you all specifically said that you wanted to have Mass DEP come and speak to you folks in about three months, and I'm just yeah. wondering if you if you still want that, or if you just want to report back. I think at this point, um, I think a report would be from you know, you're sort of giving you know, giving us uh, feedback with regard to would be enough. What do you guys think? I agree. Uh, a written report as opposed to a, a presentation of it. I, you know, I would appreciate the, ed, you know, the education, the enhanced education that we would get from such, such a uh, meeting with someone from DP, DEP. That's just my own opinion. Well, that's a good opinion. Hmm. Uh, uh, Don, does he have any opinion? Uh, I agree. You agree with uh, Bobby? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Uh, and Terry, uh, do you have any opinion? I, I think that uh, both would be really effective mechanisms, provided that there was already a vote this evening with the direction to proceed with the watershed permit. I think that a conversation with Mass DEP could be more specific to what a watershed permit entails versus the broader kind of scope of what you guys talked about on December 13th. Okay, well, I, th I, I think that uh, that brings up the point that uh, we would only be hearing uh, on what the watershed part would be, okay? And I think that would be useful. So I think uh, Bobby is, is, on, is on spot with regard to the education piece that would be part of it. Okay, so yeah, okay, why don't we go back to what we, uh, we talked about on the 13th that uh, in a couple months, uh, we, you know, we do have that uh, visit if we can get it. Great. Thank you for clarifying. I will set that up. Okay, great. Thank you. Look, what's the next item? I believe it's the health agent report. Yeah. Well, I think we already heard from it. Do you have anything else? I wanted to inform the board and the public this evening just about um, an increase of respiratory illness in Massachusetts and Barnstable County. There are Mass Department of Public Health dashboards that provide this information on a weekly basis. There's also a new vaccination dashboard up and running with county and town specific data. So that could be something that the Board of Health is interested in as well as the public. We are seeing an increase in the community transmission of COVID-19 and influenza is still increasing and very high in the Cape and Islands region. So for the COVID test, we are being still asked regularly if we have a supply available at the town hall that we received from the state and we do not. However, COVID.gov is still a resource if residents have not already used it they can go online and request those 
and it, it will bring to the USPS, the Postal Service, and they can get them delivered to them. But unfortunately, our supply is out. So I just wanted to give you an update on those resources and and how we're doing so far this season. Uh, you, you ran a very, uh, you know, you ran a, uh, let's say, a, a vaccination uh, process. In your opinion, is that something that we need to look at again? For COVID and influenza, we typically only do it the once per season. I would not recommend doing so again. We used to offer two clinics, but the turnout on the second clinic became so minimal that we discontinued it. <coughs> I'm thinking that you might want to uh, uh, think about uh, contacting uh, uh, a local uh, media press to tell them about concern about you know about this that they you know that they need to uh, look out for themselves going forward. You can you can do a, a PSA for uh, on uh, Born TV for example by just sending over a thing about uh, our concern that uh, you know that because. Uh, we don't have the uh, uh, the testing apparatus that, that individuals have to be concerned about their own welfare to a certain point. You follow me? And then at least, you know, in other words, this is something, I don't know how much, how many people actually watch what we're doing, but I think getting it out there so that we're, you know, we're trying to warn people to protect themselves, I think might be a good thing. What do you think? The testing is still readily available. It's just that the supply that the local Board of Health here in Warren received from the state, those were used up by our residents. Okay, so we is it possible that, uh, uh, let's see, who, who's our representative uh, at the state? I think uh, we have two uh, two state reps, uh, Vieira and uh, who's the one, uh, who's the other, is that Xerox? Xerox? Yes. You Okay, perhaps you know. Perhaps you could uh, give uh, give their offices a call, uh, because I want to make sure that we, if we're asking them to increase the supply of testing equipment to us, you know that we know that what, what we're asking for. But anyway, I don't know if that's a, if that's something that uh, you think would be useful to do. We're typically informed by the state when they have that incentive available to local boards of health and you can opt in or out. We have opted into it in the past. If it comes back up as an, as an available option for local boards of health in general, we will continue to, to request that. Right now, there is availability for tests through other sources and we're here for the public to educate them on how, how to get those tests and it's more so a public education component as to where, where to get them since we don't have the supply here at the local Board of Health, but it's still available through pharmacies, insurance providers, healthcare institutions, and through that COVID.gov. Bill, we lost you again. What you're, what you're telling me is that they're available on a reasonable basis from commercial sources. And we should encourage people to do that, right? There is still availability for the test, yes. Some of them are from the, the federal government, the COVID.gov. Okay. And we do have that information up on our, on our web page. Okay, so put that on the web page. Yes, we, we have it up on the web page, yes. What else do you have? That was all for this evening. Okay, thank you. What's the next item on the agenda? Uh, approve the minutes. At the um, uh, minutes? Yeah. I had submitted an amendment. Did you all get a copy of this? Yeah. We did. Yes. I submitted an amendment on item four mm -hmm. and That's an amendment on item eight. Yeah. Okay. So with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I can't. I was was in here. That was for the November fifteenth. November fifteenth meeting. All right. Yeah. Okay. 
I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the November 15th meeting as amended. Second. Don, Don seconded. Okay, is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Okay, and, and myself. Okay. Yes. Sure. Is, there, is there anything else on the agenda? Oh, you had a question, Dustin? Yeah. Did you hear me? I had to abstain from that November 15th. I wasn't here. Okay, so we do have three votes, right? Yes. Okay, so we, do have, we do have a, yeah, okay. All right. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. I agree. I'm down to 2% on my, on my iPad right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Terry. Thank you very much. Uh, this has been a very interesting meeting. And our next meeting will be on the 24th, and I, and I should be back from Georgia by then. But I'm having a hell of a time with my son. Okay. We're, we're here. Thank you. Good, Good night. night.